Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Hopefully I can get this thing to focus. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on my Opai Ula. They are doing pretty well. The uh, macro algae that I purchased has been growing quite a bit. I split it up into various tanks. Here's a couple of patches growing over here. Another one right here. And another one right here. The uh, tank is still a little bit, a little bit hazy in there, but not not as bad as it was for a while. Um, just immediately prior to moving it, and after moving it. But hey, T Blade, welcome. You're the first to hit the live chat. So welcome. Oh wait, actually, Damien is, and then T Blade. I miss Damien. So welcome, both of you. Um, I'm always curious about this because I'm partially colorblind and I wonder how red the shrimp look to people when they're they see them sometimes they're like blood red even to me and other times they're not but like these darker shrimp here like the one in the middle of the screen do they look pretty red or what do they look like just curious Elaine Smith in the house as well nice to see you here there are probably a few hundred shrimp in here um, I'd actually kind of like to feed them. They're, they're constantly feeding in here. You can see them all digging around in the substrate. And there's some of them on the glass. Where's that one that was just right in front of the camera? There it is. There's one on the glass there. I don't know if I can make it focus. Probably not. But there's several of them kicking around on the glass. Hey, Supreme Gecko in the house as well. Hi, welcome. I'm going to see if I can get the camera to settle for just a minute. I'm going to put it in the... Um, tripod here. See if that works. Just a second here. So that I can drop some food in there. We can watch them eat, perhaps. It's always fun. They, they really make a good feeding frenzy. So let's see what we can get. I hope you can hear me. My microphone broke. So sad that my microphone broke. Um... I need to get a new microphone, but I and I will get a new microphone, but for the moment I just hope you can hear me. Um, can everybody hear me just fine, or how am I doing? Okay, Supreme Gecko says, audio is okay. Who else is in the house? VB23, nice. Nice to have you here. Let's see if I can uh, get this pellet to drop in. Okay, I just dropped a pellet in. We'll see if it sinks um, into the shot, or maybe I'll just use this turkey baster. Knock it down. I hope that works. Wow, this is stubborn. Doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna sink. Let me see if I can get it to sink. Oh, it's totally floating. Well, that's disappointing. Maybe it'll sink in a minute. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I just knocked over a rock with that. That's no fun. Um, did I accidentally get floating food and I didn't notice? Just a second. I gotta check this out. How fun would that be? Oh, I did get floating pellets. Darn, I went to a different pet store and got floating pellets. So there is a shrimp actually sitting on the food. I don't know if you can even see it. Oh, you can kind of see that. There's a shrimp there. Maybe they'll pull it down in a minute, but it's kind of hard to see from up there. So we'll just check things out going on down here. See how they're doing. Um, I wish I had a more adjustable tripod sometimes so that I could get a better better height but we'll see how this goes <coughs> <coughs> sorry not feeling my best today but I'm still happy to be here and hopefully you are too so uh, I'm just gonna see what's going on here okay sound is doing okay so anybody have requests for rented guys in the house as well if the pellet water soaks and you squeeze it will it sink that's a good question. I'll try that. Some pellets will do that, so we can see if this one does. Mm. Yeah, it's just one of those things I've been having a hard time shaking lately. But I'm on antibiotics, have been for a few days, so we'll see if I get over it. <laughs> Dylan's mini beast, time to make some popcorn shrimp. <laughs> there you go. I guess these would be tiny little morsels, wouldn't they? Oh, look, you can see that they're 
their activity is uh, their activity level is increasing as they smell the food. Yeah, thanks for it, guy. And yeah, that's an idea, Elaine. Crushing them, I could probably get the the powder would probably sink a little bit more readily. This is a ten gallon, but these shrimp are tiny. They are a lot smaller than a like a cherry shrimp, even though they're similar in color to the red cherry shrimp. They're they're much much smaller. The adults top out. The biggest adults I've seen are probably closer to half an inch than an inch. They're really really small. So this is a this is just a ten gallon tank, but they're I don't know at the the largest number I've had in here probably several hundred. I don't really know how many are in here. Because a lot of them are always hiding in the rocks, like over here, hiding in the rock piles at any given time. So, you know, there's a lot of shrimp in here. And shortly before I moved them, for, for several years before I moved to this tank, there were always babies, always babies in here. And then, um, well, and then I moved them, and then they, they didn't, uh, they stopped having babies for a while. That's not uncommon, but they should start up pretty soon. So make it Kate asks if they eat the algae. This this macro algae here, they don't really eat that so much, except if it dies. They'll eat some of it if it's dies. If it dies, but they'll eat algae off the glass and other types of algae that grow. So yeah, they're they're really good algae eaters that way. Um, but they don't really eat this um, the macro algae stuff. That's just in there for water quality and, and kind of for appearance. Um, so yeah, good question. And um, Mike Kinsa says, I tried shrimp once, but didn't start it right. And that does depend a lot. I mean, they do, they have some pretty specific requirements. These particular shrimp are really, really easy. They're probably the easiest species of shrimp. And I've kept a few different species. I've kept marine shrimp. I've kept um, a few different kinds of freshwater shrimp. And I have kept um, these guys. And these are brackish water shrimp. And they um, are the easiest of all because when you set them up, um, they are not... You know, they don't need a filter. There's no filter in this tank at all. Um, and I haven't changed the water in this tank um, for a really long time. I, I moved the tank, but I used the, the makeup water from the inside of the tank. And you don't change the water with these shrimp. You don't need to. They're like, uh, I think, was it 2016 or something? The last time I filled up this tank. And I've just topped it off when needed since then. They really don't need a lot of... Um, maintenance. Of course, that's not true of all shrimp. Some shrimp need very different things than this particular species. And Verena Guy, I'm glad you made the live stream too. It's been a while. Vincent Liu said, what kind of macroalgae is that in the tank? Is it keto or cheeto, depending on how you pronounce it? Well, the um, current uh, belief on this particular type of algae is that it's related to cheeto or keto, ketomorpho, whatever you want to call it, uh, but it's much finer it grows in a very similar fashion, but these strands are much, much thinner than Chitomorpha is. I've grown that in marine tanks before. And uh, so it's very similar in the way it grows, but the, the strands are like, I don't know, like a 20th. They're like uh, much, much thinner, but they, it is a very similar plant in other ways. And yeah, Supreme Gecko, um, Manala 110 was just shouting out Supreme Gecko's isopod videos. He's got some great ones. And in fact, he just did an unboxing of some of my isopods that I sent him. So, um, yeah, he's got some great stuff going on. You should check it out if you haven't already. Not just isopods, but he's got gecko stuff and everything. I just saw his uh, latest gecko video. It was really cool. So check it out. Oh, and uh, I have a request for those of you who are out here. Um, oh, you're welcome, Wally. Um, I'm glad you love those isopods. I haven't unveiled the ones you sent me yet, but I love them too. And they're doing well. And uh, I'm going to be doing the unboxing video. I've already filmed it and I've already uploaded it. Um, I'm just, you know, figuring out my scheduling when it's going to come out. But it's going to come out pretty soon. Um... It may come out this week, it may come out next week, but it's coming out soon. So I won't steal the thunder of the video by telling you which species Wally sent me. He knows the secret, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spill it. So Roly Poly person, hello. 
Um, someone commented something about a website, and I want to tell everybody something. I have been working on the Aquarimax website and kind of redoing it, and I would just like to point out, uh, I'd just like to ask, if any of you would like to go check out the website and you have any feedback for me, you know, some some ideas on how to improve it and whatnot, or things that you like, I would love that. It's just Aquarimax.com. And I've especially been working on the isopod species section, the isopod care section, and the live food cultures section, not surprisingly, some of my areas of specialty. Um, so I have a lot of work to do still, but those sections are being fleshed out. Uh, I work on it a little bit uh, when I'm on the bus. I've been, you know, uploading things and changing things. So let me know what you think, if you have a chance. I would love that. So my Nala 110 says, my daughter and I love both of your iSpod videos and education. We have four cultures now looking to get more. Awesome. What uh, what kind of isopods do you have? Oh, you have shrimp too. What kind of shrimp do you have? And web make it Kate says, I have trouble getting onto the website from my mobile. Hmm. Interesting. I've had a couple people say that, but whenever I go, I don't have a problem. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Um... And Supreme Gecko says, I just went to your website a couple days ago, and it looks great. Excellent. Glad to hear that. So, I'm going to show you guys something here. There's, there's several shrimp hanging on that piece of fish food, so maybe it's soaked enough. We can pull it down, but I just want to show you. Oh. They're just hanging on it. Check it out. Oh, there's all the algae up at the top. It makes it hard to see. But check it out. That's kind of cool. I've had them do the thing where there's so many on it, they... I just pull it down and it sinks to the bottom so we'll see what we get at this point I don't really want to squeeze it because I'm worried I'll just chase the shrimp away poor little guys don't really want them to have to deal with that but that's kind of fun kind of like that does anybody have any uh, requests for what you want to see critter wise you want to see some specific isopods or anything like that um, okay so Mike Kinsessa do you sell shrimp I live in northern Utah well, we're neighbors then, and yes, I do. I could get you a starter group of these guys if you want. Um, one thing I would mention, though, is that you do need to cycle the aquarium, but without a filter. Do a filterless cycle with these guys, and one of the best ways to do it, you get the substrate and the, the lava rock in there, and then you, you can take a little chunk of this algae, which you know, gets you started. So I could give you a little pinch of that to get going. And then you put in a few Malaysian trumpet snails. These are uh, brackish acclimated Malaysian trumpet snails. They look a lot smaller and darker than Malaysian trumpet snails, but this is what they do. I just put normal Malaysian trumpet snails from the pet store, acclimated them to back with water, put them in here. And when they breed, this is what happens. See, over here, where is it? Over here, there's the shell of one of the ancestral ones that I put in there. And, and there's another one right there in the middle of the, the shot. And then the, all of their offspring came out smaller and darker, which is really interesting. Um, that's how they work. But they breed in here, and they've been in here for years. So, yes, my, the short answer, Mike, yeah, is yes. Let's let's make it work. And my Nala 110 says, powdered orange, clue guy, Dalmatian, and backyard kind. Is it uh, Nazatum, probably? Yeah, cool. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good mix there. I like that. Um, okay, just a second. I'm going to... I want to bring out some isopods because uh, we'll let, we maybe come back to the shrimp in a minute, but we'll see. I want to do some isopod stuff because I want to show you how some of my cultures are doing. I'm pretty excited about that. So let me see. I'm going to set up the light and you can check out what the shrimp are doing in the meantime. Will I do that? But I want to catch up on stuff here. Let's see. Granted, guy says, are these shrimp able to tolerate warm water like 80 degrees or more? They can do 80 degrees, yes. Um, I wouldn't go a whole lot higher than that, but I think they could probably go close to like 85. And then uh, probably wouldn't want to push it any further. But they're very adaptable. Um, and they can actually do uh, water down to about 39 degrees and still breed in that. So that's nuts, and, but they can do that. Um, they can actually do 80, or sorry, 39 degrees and still breed in that temperature um, because Mustafa, who's one of the, he's probably the, the biggest breeder of these shrimp that I know of. He's out in California, Southern California. He keeps cultures outside year round 
and he's had the tanks go down to that temperature and they're still breeding. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool deal. They're pretty pretty hardy, but yeah, in the in the 80s, I think you'd be fine in the low 80s. Um, let's see. And Minola says, and some blue neocardina that we started from six now have over 150. Awesome. You know, the blue neocardina are my favorites. It's I have only kept one. They, there was a pet store once that had one available. That's all they had, and I bought it, and I loved it. But uh, then I didn't buy any more, and so I didn't have any more. But I've had other varieties of neocardina and bred them and everything, but I've never bred the blue ones, and I would love to sometime. I like the ones that are, like the blue velvets are my favorite, I think. So that's cool. I just don't have a tank to put them in right now. And Supreme Gecko says, I always love seeing the Maltese. Okay, well, I'm going to try to make that happen. i got to go turn the light on because the, the uh, light turned off because of the timer. Let me see if I can get it going again. Those fry are getting bigger. Come on, light. This old power center is getting a little old. Um, but let's take a look. Let's take a look, shall we? Let's see. I'm going to... Switch this over for just a second here, and pop it down to the tank. Let's take a look at these multis. I just saw the fry kicking around a minute ago. There's at least three fry down here that are, are grown up, so let's see if we can see some. There's one right immediately. See that little fry there? I'm afraid that one may have a back deformity. Um, once in a while, they show up with spinal deformities. There's one right there in the middle of the screen that has a slightly short, um, you know, truncated spine. Which is not great and sometimes they're just terribly curved and twisted um, so I'm afraid that fry might actually have that issue so I might have to call that one if it does but uh, yeah let's see if we can get some fry uh, to show up sorry about the algae on the glass I should have done that should take care of that this week I haven't gotten to it so it's kind of algified um, let's see parakeet's doing very well as usual practicing it's uh, speaking and everything, which is fun. Always fun to listen to it talk. I wish it would talk more on camera. And so, okay, so great, Mike. I don't think I've put Opaiula on the the stock list yet. I don't. Maybe I did. I can't remember now. But we can make that happen anyway. I've got enough. We can make it work, even if they're not on the stock list. Oh, look at those little babies! I love the babies. So you can see a couple of them darting around. And Make It Kate says, Russ, have you ever found isopods on your herping trips in southern Utah? Anything different from the north part of the state? Good question. Last time I was down there, and I should have filmed them, and I didn't, uh, there were a couple of species that I don't see up here. I think there were some Porcelio dilatatus down there, um, from what I remember, and also some Porcelionides prunosis. There's a lot of stuff down there that I don't usually see, and... Uh, that was, um, yeah, so that was pretty cool. I didn't collect any because um, I'm just, I'm low on space and I'm trying to make, uh, you know, make sure I, I'm careful about which species I pick. And so if I just have wild caught um, Porcelio dilatatus, I already have the giant canyons and I already have Porcelio des prunosis, so I wasn't, I wasn't too keen on collecting any, but uh, I might. You know, next time I go down, I should at least video them, because they're always cool. And yeah, Varenid Guy, the Opaiola perfect for an unheated tank. I've never bothered with heating them, and they do great without heating them at all, so. Um, Pocosaurus is in the house, nice. Varenid Guy, blue velvet neos are pretty awesome. Speaking of which, I recently got a starter color in golden back yellow, and I got a super excited about it. Wow, I don't know if I've seen that strain. I bet it's awesome, though. Um... Supreme Gecko, have you ever thought of using any dither fish in the Maltese? I actually have, and I've kept a few different species with them. Well, what have I kept with them? Let's see. Um, I've kept um, gold, gold barbs with them, and they do okay. I had a school of gold barbs long before I had the Maltese, and put the gold barbs in with them, um, the ones that were still left, because, you know, several years after the school, after I started the school, I had a number of them left, and they did all right in there. I've thought of putting some of the endlers in there. I've heard mixed results about that, whether or not they eat each other's fry. I'm sure the multis would pick off some of the the endler fry. 
but uh, I don't know if the multi fry would get picked off or not. So I've, I've thought about it though. I might do that at some point. And yeah, there's some really, really small fry. But um, are you seeing like a second batch of fry in with these fry? Wally, that's what I'm wondering. Because there are three fry in here that are maybe, I don't know, three weeks old. And you just saw some that are even smaller? So that's cool. I, I missed that. I was paying attention to the chat and I didn't even notice. Because, yeah, sometimes I'll see if I can focus down here, see if we can find anything really small. Um, let's see. So, Make It Kate says, Do those lay, do they, these lay their eggs in those shells? They do. They, they lay the eggs in the shells, the fry hatch, and then they'll hang right around the shells of their parents for a short time. A lot of times they'll be in the gaps between the shells once they hatch. And then eventually they get bigger and move off and find their own little shell bed, which is cool. Um, most of these actually, probably most of these multis were, were uh, hatched in this tank, I'm thinking. There might be a couple. but So the middle shell in the middle, is that the one the little ones are coming out of? Okay, let's see what we got. That would be cool if we had another batch. Oh, is it, um, let's see. Is it this one, Wally? Is this the one you're talking about, or is it this one? Which one is it? To the left of the shell, like over here? This one. one here? Right in here somewhere? Huh, okay, I'll keep my eyes open. It's a little hard because I'm looking through the, through all the chat too. I'm trying to pay attention to the chat and the fish at the same time. It's tricky, but I'm, that's cool if we got a new, oh, I saw something moving. Hmm, cool. I'll just try to keep my eye on that as much as I can. Um, Okay, so let's see, where am I? Um, so Jay's Crazy Obsessions, do you have shells they can move to? Uh, or too big? Oh, the little fish? Um, if they move to shells? Actually, these fish, they don't like um, going into small shells, has been my experience. They're not interested. The, the little fry are not interested in going into small shells. And I've had small shells available. They're just interested in going in the gaps between the big shells, which is kind of interesting. Kind of does look like sand dunes. Yeah, that's true. The fish make those. It's kind of fun. So. Cool. Well, I'm excited to know I got another clutch of fry, sounds like, even if I haven't seen it yet. Maybe I'll have to go back over the video later and see what I can see, because that's super cool. Because last time before this, when I had fry, this group over here had a batch of six, and now all those little ones around there are from that batch of six. And then this this shell bed in the back had two, and you can see they're just about the size of their mother now. The mother is that, that chubby one in the middle. And then um, this one over here hasn't had any fry. Oh, what did I spill on the tank there? That's ugly. And uh, they haven't had any fry yet. And then this group over here has had, last time they had one fry, and then um, this time they had three, and then it sounds like there are more, an undetermined number, which is pretty cool. Okay, so they can stay together. How many can safely stay in the tank together? I've seen multis with just loads of t and loads of fry and loads of fish in here, and it's it just depends kind of on your water changes and and your filtration and, and everything, so that you can keep water quality high. But if you could keep water quality high, then you'd have to do uh, you'd have to have a pretty good like a flow through system or or doing some pretty heavy water changes. Um, you could, I would say safely have a hundred multis in here. You'd have to put more shells in. And a lot of those would be fry, but you could have like 25, 30, 40 adults and the rest of fry and be in here and they'd be fine. I don't, I kind of lost count. I have a little, a f something over 20 in here at this point, but I don't know exactly. I had nine adults and then they started having fry all over the place. So something over 20, but I'm not sure how many more than 20 in here. So. 
Good question. All right, so say goodbye to the multis, everyone. We're gonna pop over here now. Oh, my, I always put my thumb in the way. That's annoying. Okay. Shrimp are going kind of nuts over here. Let's see. Um, where's the camera thing? Sorry. Um, let's see. Shrimp are still eating at that pellet, but the shrimp on the bottom are kind of swimming around and moving around more. It's kind of fun. I wish I hadn't gotten floating pellets, because when I put sinking pellets in there, they just go nuts. It's awesome. I'm going to... Which do I prefer, aliens or predators? Well, I've had plenty of pet predators. I have never had a pet alien, so I guess I have to say I prefer predators. Hmm. They're starting to gather around that shell there. Remember that piece of food. Okay, I'm going to pull out some, uh, some isopods, everybody. I'm going to do the isopod thing. Okay. Here we go. Isopod time. Boom. Can I get this any higher? That would be nice. Oh, in terms of the movie monsters, I should have thought of that. Um, the movie monsters. You know, I've never seen that movie. I've never seen any iteration of that movie. So I guess I don't really have a... I think I saw part of one of the Aliens movies once. But not the whole thing, so I can't really comment, I guess, because I don't know what I'm talking about. Ugh. Here we go. There we go. Now we're getting there. We're getting there. Sorry, everybody. We'll get it going. Um, I just put a slab of cork in here, heat-treated cork, to see if I could get the isopods to play with it. They usually take a while to break into it. They're not all that excited about it for a little while, and then they go nuts and decide it's awesome, the best thing in the world. But I did want to show you how my colony's going. So let's dig in a little bit and see what we got, because it's pretty cool. This is my um, orange powder orange colony. It's a fairly new colony, but as you can see, I've got lots and lots of isopods in here. I love the way that they just grow so fast. They grow and breed really, really fast. I love their color. I love that, that velvety sheen in the orange. It's just a cool combination. And I don't know, I would say I've got several hundred in here for sure. So they're doing really well. Um, these, okay, so dryer for powder oranges. I have found that they like a lot of ventilation and that they do pretty well with dry um, with fairly dry substrate, not all the way dry, of course. I usually damp in a corner, like this corner is all damp, all around here is all damp. And I keep one corner damp at all times um, for, you know, I'll dampen it probably twice a week and two or three times a week maybe. Make sure that they always have a damp area and it's probably like a quarter to a sixth the size of the rest of the enclosure. And the rest of the enclosure is fairly dry. And they, they do really well that way. I have tried putting them in um, wetter enclosures like with dart frogs and they don't actually do all that well in that. They don't breed as fast and they don't, they don't thrive. So I prefer, at least for me, so I prefer to keep them drier. And these are magnolia pods. These were sent to me by Brian. So thanks, Brian. I have a couple more left. I've been putting them in my isopod enclosures. A lot of the isopods like to hang out in them, hide in them. Especially the babies, like you can see some babies kicking around in there. So I love these magnolia pods. He sent me these magnolia leaves too. I'm throwing those in. And some oak leaves. Some of these leaves in this enclosure are oak leaves. And some of the leaves I get in my backyard, like here's one of the oak leaves he sent me. Um, but a lot of these are leaves that I got in my backyard too. So I mix them up just to keep them going. Um, I'm always adding more and more. So that's, that's the cone. Oh yeah, and I totally knew what you meant. I got it, but uh, yeah, it's always good to clarify. And then I'm going to put the lid on. You can see how much ventilation I have here. It's a lot. This is all chiffon right in here. And then on the sides, oh, sides I've got cutouts on both sides too. Because I feel like the powder oranges just do well with a lot of um, ventilation. So 
Make it Kate says, I'm really struggling with my armadillidium clue guy. You know, I'm kind of struggling with mine too. I've had times when they're doing super well, they just go crazy, and other times where they're not. I'm not doing all that great with them either right now. I mean, I have some, but I've had some die off, and it's rather disappointing. Um, I think I've had the culture, not never crash all the way, but I've had the culture like have a a die off three times since I got them, which is nuts. I've, very few isopods are this picky for me, so I don't know what's going on with those guys. Really frustrating, but um, they do seem to do better when they're warm. They seem not to like bug burger as much as the other isopods do. They seem to like fish food better. Um, see, they, these haven't gone for it either. I just put this in a few days ago, but I want to show you. Yeah, so I'm glad I'm not the only one, but I wish nobody were suffering with them. It's really annoying. Um, let's see. So if anybody has any tips about clue guy, getting their clue guy to do a good job, um, then let me know. This I'm just going to show you how I'm doing here with, with these guys. These are amazing. I love the dairy cows. There are so many dairy cows in here. I just moved them into this larger enclosure just a few days ago. So there's, they haven't been breeding in here yet very much because it's just been a few days, but there's a ton of them in here. And um, let's see. So Wally's asking, do you see the isopods eating the magnolia leaves when they have the other leaves in there? They tend to head for the other leaves first, I think, and then they'll eventually get the magnolia leaves once they kind of get the softer ones. And it's the same with oaks. Um, so, and then, uh, let's see. So, Trebor's Grover said, how fast do Armadillidium nasatum breed? Actually, they're one of the faster Armadillidiums for me. I think my, um, the, what you call it? Sorry, my brain melted. Um, Orange Vigor breed faster, but the, the Peach Pillbugs, the Nazatum, breed fast for me. Pretty fast. Um, I don't know, that's not very specific, is it? Let me think of what I can think of that might be more specific information for you. But here are some of my peaches, my Armadillidium Nazatum Peach right here. Ooh, I probably knocked some of them off. When I did that, yeah, some of them fell off, sorry. But they breed pretty fast. Um, and I feel like they don't get nearly as big as Armadillidium um, vulgari does. Like some of these I'd consider, they seem to be approximately full size. They're not getting any bigger, really, than that. I mean, you know, some of these bigger ones here are probably my full size. But uh, they breed pretty fast. There's a ton of little babies in here. And uh, I would say they were breeding within a few weeks after I got them. But that probably doesn't, doesn't help a whole lot. I wish I had some more specific information for you. Um, okay. So the cork board that I have in here, where did I put it? Did I just, oh, it was in the other one. The cork board I just got at Hobby Lobby. Just heat treated cork board. You gotta be careful with that kind of stuff because sometimes it's you know, dangerous um, to use different kinds. Um, some of them are stuck together with like po potentially toxic glues and whatnot, but I think this one is just heat treated, seems to be fine. Um, so make it Kate. So are you talking about um, the dairy cows in this case? I, the dairy cows seem to like it moist, but they like a lot of ventilation from what I've noticed. And ah, so Supreme Gecko was out of stock of the dairy cows, huh? Well, I've got a few if you want to talk to me about that. I don't want to take business away from Wally, but see, these are my uh, my orange leaves. So the same species of the dairy cows, but a different color variety. And they are this is a new culture, just started a month or so ago, something like that. And they're they're breeding. There's a lot of babies in here. Um, not as much as the dairy cows because I haven't had them for as long. But you can see there's a lot of babies. I love these. If I had to pick a favorite. Five favorite species of isopod, this would be on the list. I can't just pick one, but it would be in my top five. For sure. So, um, yeah, they are so fun and they get so big. I love them. Sufyan Bukhari, welcome. And 
Elaine Smith says, are spider plant leaves okay to put in for leaf litter? I think they would eat those. And I don't think they have any toxicity for isopods that I know. Okay, so you are talking about the clue guy. Yeah, they are tricky. Let me see. I'm going to pull some out. Um, pull mine out. Take a look at them. See what we can find. I've even got a specimen in there that's kind of different from all the others. And I'm going to see if I can point that one out. But for a while, they were all gathering right under the cork bark. And I had just loads of them. And now they're not gathering under the cork bark anymore um, so much. I see one there. There's one. This is the individual I was talking about. It's got really big white patches on it. Oh, one of these is the one with the really big white patches on it. And one of them is just normal. Let's check it out. I want to see its back. Come on. See how this one on the, the one that's crawling around is the one that's just normal. But this one has really big white patches. Is it this one or did I pick up the wrong one? I don't know. I can't tell when it's all folded up. But, so I, you can see them. They're doing okay. This is like my second generation of them. Uh, maybe third, I don't know. But they're just not doing, uh, no problem. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find a good isopod for my vivarium. Ah, well, what kind of vivarium do you have? I can probably help you out there. Um, <laughs> well, thanks. Um, thanks, Supreme Gecko. And, yeah, this is one of my bigger ones. It's been around for a while. Yeah, crimson, crimson, how do you say that? I don't know. Crimson something. The rubber ducky isopods are pretty cool. I'm going to get some of those someday. They're, they're on my... Oh, there's the spots. Check out those spots. I mean, that's got atypically large spots for a armadillidium clue guy, wouldn't you say? I think so. Let me see if I can pull another one out. We'll do a comparison here. If I can find one that stays still long enough for me to pick it up. And I can find a, one without making a mess of the screen. I don't want to just put my hand in front of the screen the whole time. There's one. This is a normal one. Okay, got one. Let's do a comparison if we can here. What do we got? Okay. Yeah, see the difference in the spots? That's There's a definite difference there. I mean, that that is an atypical individual. I might even someday isolate it and get like Armadillidium klugai paint spots or something. I don't know. Because there's a total difference there. You can see it. So crimson. Oh, okay. I feel better then. Oh, thank you, Supreme Gecko. Good idea. So Jay's obsessions. Yeah, he's come to my house and bought bugs. <laughs> Become adding fertilizer to old bedding. They just started showing up. So they're doing well for you. That is good. Glad to hear that. Oh well. I am kind of uh, running out of time here. I'm, yeah, I'm, oh wow, you can now, you can see the spot difference a lot right now, can't you? Okay everyone, well thanks for uh, uh, showing up for the live stream. Thanks for the likes. And um, be ready for my video on Friday coming out. If you'd like to, please um, check out my my video, um, my website if you can, and let me know what you think of the changes I've made on the website. And the standard one here is just called Armadillidium klugai, sometimes called a clown isopod. All right, well, thanks everybody again, and I will see you soon. We'll have a parting shot of this lovely uh, Armadillidium klugai isopod.